welcome everyone. Um, I'm session uh, with a self introduction. My name is Yao Hill. I got my degree in second language studies from University of Hawaii at Manoa. And I now I work as an assessment specialist and I help faculty on my campus to develop, assess program level student learning outcomes. So I work with faculty a lot and I provide workshops and uh, professional development opportunities to help uh, faculty with assessment. So today's session, it's starting with the end in mind, defining student learning outcomes. By the end of this session, I do have outcomes for you. I hope that you'll be able to define student learning outcome statement, differentiate different levels of uh, student learning outcomes, and be able to draft the project level student learning outcome that target language skills, in particular pragmatic skills, in your cultural competencies, and success skills. So let's start with the definition of student learning outcomes. Student learning outcome is an action-oriented statement of the knowledge, skills, or dispositions students are expected to know, to be able to do, or value upon successful program course pro project completion. This is pretty abstract. So let me give you a concrete example. Thinking about a chef or someone who is learning cooking, what kind of knowledge do you think this person should have, right? You think the person needs the knowledge of different ingredients and know that pepper is spicy and bacon is salty and no different cooking methods. So that's knowledge. But only with the knowledge does not necessarily mean that the person can cook a delicious meal, right? The person has to apply his knowledge, do this combination of ingredients like this person is doing so beautifully in this picture, and adjust one's cooking process or cooking method along the way. So that is a skill, right? In terms of disposition, all oh, disposition can be so varied when it comes to cooking. Let me give examples of my, my mom's disposition regarding cooking. She believes that nutrition is everything, and nutrition is more important than taste or look. So I often come home looking at the big pot of stew, knowing not knowing what it is. Actually, I know exactly what it is. It's everything in the fridge, right, in the stew. Um, so that's, that's her disposition. But there's maybe other dispositions such as um, only using resource, uh, su sustainably resource sourced materials, only use local materials or try to uh, strive for the balance of nutrition and, uh, and taste, right? These are the dispositions. But what about the language learning? Let's look at knowledge, skills, and dispositions in language learning. Knowledge. One example are students able to define and describe the rules of phonetics, pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, uh, interaction style, like formality, and as Marta said, pragmatics knowledge and intercultural competency. But you know, like me, I am an advanced second language speaker. I definitely know when to use the pronoun he and when to use the pronoun she, but I often refer, I sometimes refer uh, to my son as, as a she. So she went to school today and my daughter would protest and she would say, mommy, no, your son is a boy. So having the knowledge of this language um, uh, is sometimes not as important as for students to be able, I mean, of course, for pragmatics, for example, the explicit knowledge is very important, but it is not, it, we need to bring the students one step further. In, for them to be able to perform these language functions, such as students are able to describe, narrate, compare and contrast, form hypotheses, summarize mean points, synthesize multiple perspectives. And not only does, uh, do students need to be able to perform these language functions, we also want students to be able to perform these functions to specific interlocutors or audience, for specific purposes and in specific context, right? It needs to be appropriate. And here we're really talking about pragmatics and intercultural competencies. So these are the skills in terms of language related uh, uh, skills. But as educators, not only we want students to building the language skills, we also want students to start developing the so-called 21st century skills or success skills 
for example, students, especially in PBLL, can uh, manage their project in terms of developing a timeline for the project, specify milestone products, and monitor one's own progress. Can effectively use collaboration strategies. Right? So these are the skills beyond language learning, but language can uh, be used to, target language can be used to support, also develop these success skills. So that's talk, we're talking about skills. Now what about dispositions or values? Values are particularly important to language teaching, and that is probably um, uh, one of the reasons why language is a requirement for undergraduate uh, degree programs, because we believe that by learning language, students are open to other cultural perspectives. So some examples, students seek opportunities to communicate. This speaks a very important construct in second language acquisition, right? Open to communication. Students are open to other cultural per perspectives. Students hold one's assumption tentative. These two are important um, indicators of intercultural competency. Students regularly seek feedback for improvement, another very important PBLL outcome that we hope students to be able to achieve. So that hopefully give you some example of what knowledge, skills, and dispositions mean. Now, let me give you a quiz. Here, I have two statements. Can you tell me which of the two is a student learning outcome statement? Okay, I hope that your choice is the second one because the first one speaks to the satisfaction, even though it's very important to evaluate the success of our course, it is not about student's ability. And the second one is about student's ability. Let me give you another example, which of the statement is uh, SLO state. Okay, again, it is, I hope that you choose the second one because it talks the ability to communicate. Yet the first one, even though this is confusing because public product was, is what students do, right? But, but the public product is meaningful, it's describing, it's evaluating the public product, which is important indicator of the success of your PBLL, but does not speak to student's ability. Okay, now let's move on to talk about the components of SLO. From all the examples that I talked about earlier, you can see all the statements of SLO start with students will be able to, students can. So the, the subject of the sentence, so we're talking about grammar here, is students. Focus on the students. And then it follow, often follows by uh, action verb. For example, list cultural artifacts, describe cultural traditions, analyze different points of views, compare and contrast uh, pragmatic, uh, like nonverbal communication styles, right? Hypothesize why people think of this way, different opinions, and synthesize proposed integrated research. So when I read these action verbs, would you be, in your, be able in your mind to uh, envision someone is performing these activities? You might be able to, right? And that's why we use action verbs because action verbs make what we want students to learn observable. By making what students are able to learn, uh, or, you know, showing their learning in an observable way, we can assess students' um, learning later. So these action words make some learning observable and measurable. In this link that I provide, you can find more words that describe not only cognitive skills, but also affective, like values and disposition kind of uh, uh, outcomes that we desire. So that's talking, we're talking about action words. The third component is the learning domain. In your PBL, you may be focusing on a, a content such as sustainability, um, campus lifestyle, uh, and uh, uh, tourist sites, children books, and so on and so forth. So these are the content. We're also interested in success skills, collaboration project management, and of course, language skills in terms of language functions, pragmatic functions, and intercultural functions. Going back to these action verbs, we are trying to um, avoid using vague verbs such as know and understand. It's not like it's totally um, 
So the point is that you have to make the learning observable and demonstrable. So when you say students are able to understand, how would you see that learning being manifested in their uh, performance or actions, right? So we try to avoid using vague verbs and we try to use more operationalizable action verbs. So that is the definition um, and the components of SLO. I hope by this time you're able to define what student learning outcome uh, is. Next, I'm going to talk about different levels of SLOs. When we develop a project um, or course, we often think about what we want to achieve, what the students to achieve at my project and at my course level. But we also want to think about you know, students coming through this education system to, to a bigger goal. So how can I align with my course with a bigger level of achievement that the program expects students? So that is talking about the program level SLO. And then after we align our course level SLO with a program SLO, that we also have to think about how to scaffold our students. What are the component skills? that lead to students' master of this program level student learning outcome. Let me give you two examples. In this example, at the program level, it says students can conduct research very broad, right? But in your course, you may focus on students are able to conduct interview, research through interviews, and your SLOs will state students are able to design and carry out interview projects. Here, the focus is on research. Therefore, when we think about conducting research through interview, we'll have to think about what the students need to, to do step by step, what's their developmental steps for them to reach to the final um, capacity in de developing an interview project. And your task as well represent those component skills that students must master before they can integrate them and uh, achieve a bigger level as well. And some of the example, of task level as laws are here. Students can develop meaningful research questions. Students can identify appropriate uh, in interview ease. We're talking about sampling here. Students can develop interview protocols. So it increases the trustworthiness of your interview research. Students able to write interview questions, not any question, but the questions are relevant to address the research questions, right? So this is one example of the three level as laws. Let's take a, a look at another example. Students can communicate competently and appropriately with target language speakers. Again, this is very general. But in your course, again, this is an interview task, but you can see the different angle when we talk about student SLOs in this course level SLO. Students can interview target language speakers in a polite and engaging manner. Here we're focusing more on interaction with the target language speakers in a way that is uh, polite and engaging. So when we're talking about thinking about interactions, then we start need to think about what are the kind of things that we need the students to be aware of and train them on so they develop the skills. For example, students can thank interviewee, right? It's a polite interaction. Can briefly and politely introduce oneself and can ask interview questions Politely. There's a polite way to ask questions. There's abrupt ways to ask questions, right? So you want to train students how to ask questions politely. So these are the examples of three levels of SLOs. Okay, now quiz time. Among these two statements, let's take a look. Which one is a project level SLO? A, students can apply effective collaboration techniques. B, students can act actively acknowledge their partner's input. Obviously, you got to be able to uh, acknowledge your partner's input before you can offer constructive feedback and, uh, you know, form this uh, formative uh, positive relationship with your team members. So it seems like a B is, a, um, is one step or one component of effective communication uh, collaboration techniques. So B is more likely to be a task level and A is more likely to be a project level as well. Another example. Students will be able to advocate values and behaviors that support sustainability to the members of their community. B, students can give examples on how their values and behaviors are shaped by cultural norms and practices. This one maybe is a little confusing because even B sometimes is a little harder to achieve in one project and in one course. However, you can see that 
one understanding of how one's experience, one's values are shaped by cultural norms is a way for students to gain insights and empathy into the perceptions of members of community, thus can more effectively advocate to the members of communities. So in this example, B is more likely a task level and A is more likely a project level as well. One more example, A, students will be able to write simple children's stories. B, students will be able to describe important cultural elements and writing style in the children's book. This one is easy, right? You got to know what is a children's, does a children's book look like before you're able to write one yourself. So B is a task level and A is a project level. Okay? So at this point, I hope that everybody have um, um, understanding, I'm not using the word understanding, to differentiate different levels of SLOs and to be able to um, tease apart the component skills and use them to guide your tasks and develop task level SLOs to support students learning in the project and cross level SLOs. Now coming back to project level SLOs, let me give you some examples. I'm going to give an example in two general categories, language and success skills. In terms of the language, I'm going to focus on intercultural competency and pragmatics. In terms of the success skills, I'm going to give you some example in critical thinking, project management, and collaboration. For language, um, intercultural competency, students are able to provide rich description of a cultural tradition based on analysis of the history, current cultural practices, and its impact in the world. It's a very high level intercultural competency outcome, uh, even though the verb is provide description, but actually we're talking about critical thinking here. Another example, students are able to describe one's own cultural norms and practices, which is fine. At this time, it's not as high level, but then the next sentence makes a higher level of uh, outcome from other cultural perspectives. One has to be able to describe one's own culture from the lens of others. This is a high level of intercultural competency outcome. Another one, students are able to form assumptions, hypotheses of cultural values in the target country supported by analysis of multiple viewpoints and observation. So what I think of well, French people think of the, the concept of independence, right? I have to gather evidence and ask multiple people. So that is our higher level in the cultural competency skill. Okay, going to pragmatics. Students are able to perform speech acts such as greetings, uh, thanking, requests, leave taking in a polite and culturally appropriate manner. Uh, let me give you an example. So when I first, uh, I started my uh, master's degree here for the first year, when I asked people to do things for me, that's a request. I said, I use the word, can you, would you? Things like that. And I was wondering why my professor mentioned in one of the class saying, you know, some of the Chinese students in this class are very abrupt. I didn't take to mind until later I did a research on request myself who is a co-researcher. Co and now when I say request, I would say, would you be so kind to bring me a glass of water to my husband? And not only my husband bring me a glass of water, but he, he did it gladly, happily. So learning how to do a request is very important, right? So that's why um, learning, formally learning about the speech acts are important to our uh, language learners. Another example, students are able to appropriately use uh, paralinguistic clues like volume, speed of voice, intonation, tone uh, in communication settings. And Mata has mentioned some of this. But for example, volume, like whispering. When you're whispering, you are expressing to your interlocutor that you don't want other people to hear you. And maybe whisper, whispering this action is not appropriate in the other cultures. People may see that you have something to hide. Right, so these things, paying attention to the para-linguistic clues are important. Students are able to apply compensation strategies to deal with communication breakdown. When I don't understand you, I may frown and uh, show you my confused look, or I may ask you, oh, I'm sorry, I don't understand you, can you repeat? Compensation strategies. Back-channeling, rephrasing, paraphrasing to validate interlocutor's input. If I want you to continue to talk, I may go nodding and say, mm-hmm, 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 bad channeling, right? We encourage you to talk more. So those are pragmatic, some of the pragmatics outcomes. And some of them may seem to be like a task level, but because if you want to focus on the pragmatics in the beginning, maybe you want to start somewhere, especially there has been no more 
no formal training before. Now, I'm going to give you some example of critical thinking outcomes. Now we're moving into the success skills, right? So some examples include students are able to analyze the topic from multiple viewpoints, um, provide solutions to problems and describe the advantages and disadvantages. These are all very high level. And last, which um, evaluate the strengths and the legitimacy of a claim through fact checking and analysis of motive and impact. In the current world of where alternative facts often goes on news, I think it is far more important for us to, to be able to cultivate this kind of ability in our students in terms of critical. Example in project management. I give you an example of the first one I already mentioned earlier, the second one. Students are able to regularly reflect on one's progress and make adjustments to ensure project. Another example. In terms of collaboration, students are able to form effective teams and monitor progress. Second, students assign roles and responsibilities based on analysis of each other's strengths and areas of ex expertise. Right? It's not just collaboration, it's also collaborative, but it's also critical thinking, but it's focusing more on collaboration. Students are able to motivate team members through active listening, constructive feedback, and friendly checking in. Hi, you know, you said you're going to finish that task like yesterday. How's it going today? Right? Friendly checking in, we all do that, and we know it's important in collaborative projects. So after I give you some examples of SLOs, I want to bring you back to the importance of SLOs. Let's conceptualize SLOs again, right? It's not something that just help you, your students to successfully complete that public product or the tasks throughout the way. It is something that students can transfer when they're getting out of your course. When it's, it's, it's you're helping students to form that lasting value change. After this course, you know, after I, I write some reading materials, I began to, you know, be, be more conscious when I use water. I start drinking all the water that I put in my glass rather than throwing out half of the glass that I didn't finish, right? So it's a lasting value chain. It's transferable skills that students carry with them outside of the class. Because the SLOs we want to focus on are the transferable skills and lasting value change. You really probably want to uh, limit your SLOs to three or maybe four because you want to really scaffold the learning, give them lots of learning opportunities, repeated learning opportunities, breaking down the big uh, skill into component skills and give them an opportunity to integrate the component skills back into the integrative skills using multiple learning opportunities, okay? So I gave you some examples of project level SLOs and in this link, uh, which I'm going to share with you later, I have some more like a task level SLOs that you can use. But don't be stuck on the different levels. You know when you, you do what you can, but be aspirational. So that is a session um, on starting with the end in mind defining SLOs.